All right, thanks everybody. Welcome again to another uh, Michael's uh, demonstration of various materials and thematic uh, uh, subjects that we've been going through this month. Um, we have been working with uh, abstraction, um, taking a few different artists, um, looking at their work and uh, doing, uh, doing some copies from, from their work. And today we, we end the month of February with uh, Pablo Picasso, who looks to be a pretty controversial uh, character these days, if you read up on him in, in the context of today's world. Um, but an undeniably huge influence on a lot of artists, uh, basically since about the turn of the century, la the last century, not this century. Um, so I'll look at a few of his, uh, his works um, before we actually get started. Um, and, oh yeah, somebody said needed a password. I actually needed a password as, a password as well, which was a bit strange. So I apologize for that. I don't know what was going on, but they put new levels of security on these classes because there's so much good information, I suppose. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna be doing a copy of a Picasso painting. And I want to show you uh, a couple of things before we get started. One of them, of course, is always, um, is a, uh, excuse me, the uh, list of supplies. We'll always go over that. And then I wanna show you a few slides of um, Picasso's work and sort of how it developed over the years because he's really, really diverse in terms of this, the different uh, stuff that he did. So let's have a look at uh, our supplies right off the bat. We're working in acrylics, of course. Um, and of, we have uh, the three primary colors, some a couple of earth tones, black and white. I don't have black listed here, but we will probably be using it today. So if you've got it laying around, you can throw that in the mix as well. Um, acrylic gel medium is not vital today, but if you've got it, it'll come in helpful. Uh, it'll be helpful. And then a cotton rag or paper towels or something to clean up your mess with. Um, and then a container for your water as acrylics are water-based. Um, and then some paint brushes uh, with stiffer bristles for um, acrylic and or oils. Um, although we are gonna be using acrylics, oils would work for this as well. Um, and, and frankly, watercolors too, if you don't have any of, any of those. Um, and then some sort of palette to put all your paints on and to mix everything together. So um, that's the basic list there. If you don't have all of this, um, it's not the end of the world. You certainly can get by with, um, you know, sort of a smaller uh, number of, of paints um, and, you know, maybe slightly different uh, supplies for, for various aspects of this. But um, that's, that's the good starting point uh, supply list. Okay, so let me show you the painting that, that we're gonna be doing today. This is uh, a painting, I believe of his from the 19 teens, I'm guessing, 19 teens, 20, I haven't even looked, looked it up, but it is, it is definitely sort of post-Cubist. Um, the Cubist period was sort of in the early 1900s. Um, so it's probably 19 teens, somewhere in there. Um, this is uh, the reason I chose this one. It's got a lot of really nice uh, kind of subtle color differences and color shifts. So there's lots of nice opportunities for mixing in this one. Um, and the, the shapes are fairly simple. So hopefully we'll get, get through most of this today. Should be, uh, should be a bit of a challenge, but I think we can handle it. And that is that. So if you want to take a screenshot of this, I always encourage people to do that, um, it allows you to kind of blow it up and maybe work from a bigger version of it off to the side while we're um, while we're all here together on Zoom. Um, all right, so that's that. I'll just leave that up for a second or two. I, I'm going to show you a few others of Picasso here to just so kind of show you how how diverse his his body of work was. Um, I think he lived to be about. I think he may have been 90 or or. You know, some are way up there. He was he gave he lived the full full life. Um, but this is a painting that you know when you look at Picasso, you don't think Picasso. You think sort of more of a classical painter, maybe from the the early eighteen hundreds or seventeen hundreds or even earlier. Um, but this was done by Picasso, and everybody prepare to have humble pie. Um, this was done when he was fifteen years old, 
So he was a very masterful, accomplished painter at a very early age. Um, you know, this is a this is a pretty sophisticated painting in terms of knowing how to paint and and how to draw. Um, he was sort of trained classically, um, meaning he sort of went through a, a, a regimen of learning how to draw, um, learning how to draw people, learning how to draw faces, anatomy, and things like that. So he had mastered this by the time he was a young adult. Um, and this is an example of, of one of those early, uh, more classically oriented paintings. I think this is 1888 or eight, around 1890 when he was, whenever he was 15, I think that sounds about right. Um, this is, uh, you know, still sort of realistic, but obviously his color choices are a little bit more um, personal. Um, he's sort of got a triad here of the, the primaries and then a couple of secondary colors kind of surrounding things here. So you can see he's very, he's very curious. He's very interested in, in kind of new ways of representing things. Um, and then this painting is, is probably his most famous painting. And this is called Demoiselles de Avignon, which is a, a massive painting. I think it's like nine feet tall and like eight feet wide or something like that. And it's sort of uh, a cubist type painting where he sort of flattened everything down and the faces are very stylized. Um, and it's, it's a, it was a very shocking painting for kind of conservative Paris social life of the uh, early 1900s. And this kind of uh, took everybody by surprise and by storm and was, is, was really uh, his calling card throughout his life. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's one that if you were to say Picasso, they would throw this painting out as one of sort of his five paintings that, you know, people could name. Um, and then we've got something here, which is sort of along the lines of what we're going to do today in, in that it's sort of a cubist oriented thing. And cubism is basically just everything, I'll, I'll just give you the very Cliff Notes version. Um, everything's flattened out. There's no, there's no real effort to create three-dimensional space, although this one has a few uh, shadows and things like that. But it is, uh, it is more about pattern, shape, color, and flatness. Um, you know, the two dimensions of the height by width um, are mimicked in the shape's uh, dimensions, meaning there's not a third dimension. There's not really much depth to these paintings. And by depth, I mean spatial depth, all right? And then here's sort of your classic cubist painting. You know, I could show you all of these slides and they, you know, you could make the case that different artists did all of these, but these are all Picasso. And these are all an example of just how he was constantly, uh, you know, working on nervous energy and was looking to reinvent things and, and looking for new ways of creating stuff. Um, and then this is the one we'll be working on today. So there we have it. Let's let's uh, throw this one up again here so you can see it. There it is. So one last time, if you want to take a screenshot of that, we'll let you do that before we get started. All right. And as always, um, I know that we've mentioned this and we always mention it, but I do want to make sure that everybody knows. Uh, I encourage questions. If you've got something that is on your mind, doesn't make sense, uh, put them in the chat and then Jimena will uh, read them out to me and we can sort of go through and hopefully answer your question. Okay, so I think we are ready to go. Okay, so I did something a little different for us today just to mix things up. I'm not working on Canvas today. Um, if whatever surface you want to paint on is totally fine. If you want to paint on Canvas, if you want to paint on a board, um, like like we did in our premium cat class last week, something like this. These are the Artist Loft wood panels. These are great. They're, uh, I think, a quarter inch thick or maybe even half inch thick. Um, and the only thing that you want to make sure you do with any surface that you're going to be painting on, especially if you're using oils, um, we're not using oils, but even with acrylics too. And this is a canvas pad, which you can also use. Um, these are basically sheets of cotton fabric, uh, gessoed on one side. In this case, they're ungessoed on the other side. You always want to make sure that you've got some gesso on there. Gesso just seals off the surface from anything that would sort of seep into it. 
Um, and Gesso does a nice job of that. It just sort of, you know, it, in this case, because uh, I'm using paper, I'm actually using watercolor paper. I thought I'd try something a little bit new. Um, it doesn't really matter what kind of paper you use as long as it's um, sturdy enough to kind of hold up uh, to a coat of gesso, which I put on here. And I've stained the gesso. Uh, actually, what I did is I put gesso and then I mixed in some raw umber into the gesso, stirred it up, and then just painted it on. So I, I essentially just tinted it a little bit with this with this um, raw umber to give it a little a little bit of a sort of a duller, um, not so bright white. So that's that's what I did today: watercolor paper and then gessoed with a tinted um, a tinted uh, slightly tinted with uh, raw umber and mostly gesso. So that's what I'm working on today, but feel free to work on with anything. And as always, if you're if you're just here to watch and you just want to see how this goes, um, you can always prepare your stuff ahead of time, uh, kind of to the degree of finish that I've got here. I usually do this in like a yellow ochre, but this painting has got a lot of sort of duller, more muted colors. Um, so I decided to go with something a little bit softer and, and not quite as bright and, um, and warm. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? All right, so the, the painting is, to my eye, I'm, I'm you, you know, with something with abstraction, you know, with if you're doing a still life or a landscape or something, you could say, okay, there's the horizon, there's the sky, there's the land, that sort of thing. This one is is very uh, geometric. Um, I'm looking at this this painting and I and I see that line kind of right through the middle. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to come through this painting with a uh, almost like a kind of like a pen type brush. Um, and I'm going to use this. This is a uh, one of those artist loft sets like this. Um, the they come in these little. I think this was like ten dollars for all these brushes. Some of these are other brushes interspersed in here. But this is essentially what you get. This is how many brushes you get. Like fifteen or twenty brushes for like ten bucks. You know they're not they're not made of uh, you know fine mahogany or uh, you know gold plated ferrules or anything like that but they do the job. They're really reliable. I've been using these for, um, you know, going on a year now, you know, eight months, nine months, and all of them are in great shape. So uh, they really hold up. And I'm just going to use one of these rounds, sort of a, a smaller one, number four. I'm working fairly small. Uh, this is nine by 12. Um, it's, a, it's a good size to work on for, uh, you know, this format. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use this as kind of uh, a little pen to kind of divide up the canvas a little bit. And I think what I'll do, since this is Picasso and, you know, he took a lot of uh, risks and liberties, I'm just going to take a different color than I normally use. I usually use like uh, raw umber. So I'm going to use uh, Artist Loft, uh, academic level, ultramarine blue, which is sort of a standard issue blue. And I'm just going to use this as kind of my ink for my uh, my my pen pen like uh, brush that I've got over there. Nice little round brush. And I just got a little bit there because I'm going to dilute this. I'm going to have my medium kind of off to the side here, and I've decided I'm going to use the uh, the professional grade medium. I you know somebody asked a question last last week about what's the difference between professional grade and student grade mediums. Um, well, I, I found the difference between mediums and uh, gels. It's, or no, mediums and what was it? I forget. I think it's mediums and gels. One of them is very smooth. Mediums are meant to be poured out and then the gels are a little bit firmer. Um, but as far as the like the different levels, like professional grade and the student grade, I couldn't find any information about what the difference is. So I'm going to go with the idea that the professional grade is more of a pure version of this, meaning it doesn't have a lot of extra ingredients that are just fillers. Um, but that's just me making up an answer because I couldn't find the real answer. So I do what I can. All right. So I'm just going to have a little bit of this out. I'm going to scoop it just right next to it. And this, this acts as kind of like a, a thinner to the paint 
kind of like heavy water. So if I want it to be thinned out and want the paint to flow a little bit, but I don't want it to run all over the place like water, I'll just sort of use a combination of both. So I took a little water, thin this out, and then I'm just gonna put a little blue on here and just gonna draw for a little bit. So first thing I'm gonna do is divide it in half. And if you wanted to use a ruler, you could, but I'm not going to, I'm just gonna go freehand here. And it's pretty much right down the middle. It looks to be slightly off center. So, you know, like this might be, this might be the center. I'm gonna go slightly off like that and just make a nice straight line right through it. So that's my first, first big piece of the puzzle. Um, I'm doing this all monochromatically. I'm not worrying about, uh, you know, delineating different colors here. And I've got that big yellow um, square rectangle up in the corner there. I'm just gonna lay that in. If it looks like your, your, your ink, your paint is starting to get a little stiff, just add a little bit of water. That'll make it, make it nice and easy to work with. Give it a little more flow, a little more viscosity. Um, I, I'm seeing this little bit over here and I'm going to, it just starts up off the corner and goes pretty steeply up to about here and there. And then we've got sort of this accordion type action going with the, the book. So I'll just sort of continue that. The angle here is a little bit steeper than this angle. And it goes pretty much all the way down to the bottom and then comes almost right to the middle, comes back. It's kind of a butterfly type, comes almost all the way right there, up and down. Don't worry, you know, some of these are big areas, you know, big lines and small lines. I'm just, again, trying to do the, the basic drawing of, of the main shapes in this particular case. And then we got this, and I'm not even, you know, this is the thing about abstraction is, you know, a lot of people go, oh, well, that flower is blue. It's like, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> it's just sort of a series of colors and patterns. And that's one of the things that um, about abstraction, which can be really kind of liberating is you're not bound by the rules of, uh, you know, what objects would, would normally, what they would normally do in normal space. You can kind of make stuff up and, and alter the reality. The surrealists, you know, like Salvador Dali, everybody knows him, and uh, Henri Magritte, who was, I think, a much more interesting art, artist. Um, they played around with that idea. So I'm just, I'm just sort of drawing as I, as I talk here. So if you've got any questions about, what are you doing now? I can't, I can't figure that out. Just tell me to slow down and I'll, I'll do my best. I'm just trying to break things up here. Think like a Picasso. There we go. Sort of this little rainbow thing happening here. And once again, not trying to figure it out like, oh, how does this connect to that? I'm just looking at kind of the internal logic that Picasso had working there. This looks like to be a little bit of a, a stand for his sculpture of the bull. Picasso loved to use imagery from like mythology, um, art historical references. He, I mean, he would draw information from all over the place. Spent most of his working years in Paris, but he was from Spain originally. There we go, kind of ran down of a little bit of room there. So where did that go? Blah, 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 blah. This one goes here. All right. We'll just we'll just think of this as as a a reference. I'm not going to be entirely beholden to this. That's my excuse for not getting the dimensions right. I'm just making my own version of this Picasso. Okay, and then we're gonna start 
doing this face. This might be a good uh, a good time to to actually move because sometimes you get kind of tunnel vision. So maybe I will. Maybe I'll just go over here just to mix things up. Sometimes when I find myself doing that, you sort of you sort of paint yourself into a little bit of a corner, and you lose sight of the whole thing. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna recalibrate and just find another little spot over here. I'm gonna add those light rays later. So I'm just getting major shapes at this stage. Got the big, so that's gonna come right over here. So I'm referencing this little line for the yellow. Now I'm looking at that picture frame. So I'm just going to move over a little bit, goes across the center line here. But you can see how everything kind of works off. It's either over here or it's over here, um, or it you know crisscrosses over like this one does. So you start with those big general shapes. All right, so da, 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 da. Oh, now I'll put this into, it's a little artist palette. Kind of like a big kidney bean right in the middle of it. Running out of water, get a little bit more on there. One, two, two of them are to the left and the other one crosses the center line, just sort of my reference to get the composition sorted. This ear on the bowl kind of comes right at this junction of this, hitting that, hitting that. So that's, that's another little reference I can use. The head of that bowl kind of comes up like this. And I think I'll just put the front of it like right here. So again, moving around a little bit, trying to keep myself, you know, not from point to point, trying to get a little bit of all of it up and running. A bull uh, was a reoccurring image in a lot of Picasso's imagery. You know, I kind of messed this area up, but that's all right. Give them a bit of an, an overbite maybe. Or just do something like that, there we go. He's not quite as intimidating as Picasso's bowl will be. There we go. And then the center line here, the septum of the nose. There we are. Okay, and then we've got the horns. Like that. It's an abstraction of Picasso's abstraction. I've distorted the face even a little bit more. It's kind of leaning like this. All right, I'll just throw that in there. I'm really tempted to try and fix that, but I'm not going to, because I'm going to embrace the imperfection a little bit. There we go. And I think that'll probably get us uh, mostly where we need to be. And since I've got blue on here, I think I'm gonna start by doing, by scrubbing in this large area of blue uh, around the bowl, uh, and around this uh, central book. And obviously my blue over here is a great place to start, but it's kind of more of a gray blue. So what I can do is I just start with blue and maybe throw a little bit um, of this brown, the raw umber, which is a nice, a nice way to kind of uh, soften the intensity of a color. Is just take, you know, there's lots of earth tones out there siennas and umbers and ochres and variations thereof. Um, so if you, if you know, I've, I've got blue, but it's, it's certainly not that intense. 
I think that this blue is a little bit much. So I'm going to add a little bit of this, this, um, this brown here, this raw umber. If you've got burnt umber, um, if you've got raw sienna, uh, see, although siennas and yellow ochres would tend to make it more kind of in the green end, brown, the brown, the umber is a little bit more neutral. It's, uh, it's not, so, not so yellowy and not so warm. And I think I'm gonna to have to make a, what's called a tint of that color, because this color might be a little bit much in terms of its uh, darkness, might be a little too dark. So I'm gonna have a little bit of white here. So I'm just gonna kind of experiment with this. I'm just gonna actually see what this looks like down, down here. It's actually not too bad as is. Maybe I'll stick with it because I'm, I'm working kind of thinly. So this gray layer, which, which has that color already in it. Let me see if you can see that. Oop. Let me just put this over just a little bit so you can see, there we go. So a little bit of this, this umber has kind of cooled it down and calmed it down. So I, th I think we're gonna go with it. So it's, it's, it's kind of got this light, the, the light background coming through because I'm working fairly thin. So I'm just going to use this as is without adding any white to it. I'm going to use white later. So um, it's there for the taking. But for the time being, I'm just going to leave my color kind of untinted. Oh, the little perfectionist in me always is like, oh, just fix that face. Put a little medium in it, make that paint go a little bit longer. Just kind of mix up a little bit more as I go. You know, this, this if you look at this uh, background closely, it's, um, it's, not, it's not perfect in, sen in the sense that it's, it's all smooth and even all the way around. So, um, you know, there's not a, you know, a really strong compulsion here to make this very smooth or very even. So I'm just, I'm just kind of taking it as it goes. All right. So just working around my little preliminary drawing that I had. Move things over. Sorry about that. Well, a little bit more. There we go. It's better. And you see this little pattern over here. I'm just going to add that in later if I get to it at all. Um, but for now, I'm just going to kind of put the the broad strokes, so to speak. And then all this is uh, is out of that blue zone. And then it looks like. This is the last little bit here. So that's about it. And you can see, well, I don't know if you can't see it too well, but you know, some of this blue looks a, a little bit bluer. Some of it looks a little bit browner. Some of it looks a little bit more neutral. Um, and that's actually, there's a lot of that going on in the painting itself. You know, like say, if I wanted to take a, a little bit of white here and work a little bit heavier, um, you know, there's a couple spots uh, up top that are maybe a little bit, a little bit light, a little bit lighter. So you can kind of vary that, you know, vary that uh, color scheme a little bit in that background. See, this one's a little bit softer, a little bit more gray. And you, you know, you can definitely see that this is a painting. You can see the brush strokes. You can see the the kind of the color variations. Um, very much a. Uh, you know, just kind of a reactive painting is going, oh, it looks like it needs a little bit over here. You're just, you're just kind of pushing around. Since I've got all this blue on here, I'm just going to look for anything else that I can get some mileage out with this. Um, there's some little squares here that look like kind of a really dark blue, almost a black. Um, so I'm just going to use this blue as my base and, and, and work off of that. So the first one I'm seeing here is this little shape here, uh, which looks a little bit more bluish. Uh, and definitely lighter. So 
I'm using, you know, more blue and definitely more white to kind of get this, this light blue tint right in here. So something like that. I think that's a fairly good match actually. That's why I, I really liked this painting when I, when I picked it out because, because of that uh, exact um, reason is just, there's just lots of little subtle little shifts here. Um, and uh, speaking of subtle little shifts, we're going from kind of a real strong blue gray. Um, let me get some of that back a little bit. I went a little bit too far with some of this, this light stuff up here. So I'm just gonna get some of it back. But what I, what I notice is this shift over here is bluish, but it's more of kind of a turquoise. So it's got a little bit of yellow in it, like greenish. So it's, uh, it's, it's a variation of this. So I'm gonna clean my brush, give it a nice good uh, dose of water, wiggle it around, try to get the bulk of this off. Cause I wanna, what I'm really trying to get rid of is, is all of this brown. And now I'm gonna shift this blue into the turquoise end of things. So I'm gonna take some pure blue and then I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow. And I think I might try this particular yellow. This is a little bit um, kind of a stronger yellow. This is a cadmium yellow, I believe, yes. So this is cadmium yellow. And uh, this is one of the professional grades. So it's got a really nice, what's called tinting strength. It's, it's for yellow, it's pretty powerful. Cadmium yellow is a pretty powerful yellow anyway. And then you get the professional grade um, level paints and they'll have more pigment. They have basically the highest amount of pigments you can get in these paints uh, before it, it, it doesn't you know, do as, as a, an effective job of, of being paint. Um, so I'm just trying to get that turquoise over there and that's way too yellow. So let's take a little bit more of this blue. It's getting a little closer. And this one, we're definitely gonna to have to make a tint. And by that, I mean, add white. So it's still too green. I want it to be blue, but I want it to be a, a yellow blue. So I think that's pretty close. So I'm just gonna take this. So I, I just sort of went back and forth between cadmium yellow and this ultramarine got it to where I, I think the color is, the hue, and I'm gonna change the value, meaning I'm gonna make it lighter. Oh, look at that. I think I like it. Still a little too green, but it's pretty darn close. It's funny, cause I'm looking at this on the camera, um, and on my paper, it actually looks pretty darn close, like almost exact. So I'm gonna go with what I've got here. I can always change it if I want to. And I'm just sort of keeping these open because I'll come back to them later. What do people think? What's, what are you seeing? What is it? Is it like, does it seem too dark? Does it seem too green? Does it seem too blue? What are you seeing from your end? Or does it seem just right? So Lisa says perfect, and Amy says add more white. Add more white. I'm 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 feeling them add more white. I think the color is right, um, but I think it needs to go lighter. I I, I agree. So this is the, I mean this is really some of the trickiest stuff in painting is getting all of the different color variations right. So you got to get the color right. Um, is, it, is it this color? Does it have that degree of yellow? Does it have that degree of white? Does it have that degree of blue? And then the next bit is, is it too dark? Is it, is it you know, like a dark blue or is it a light blue? 
And so whoever said, um, I think it needs to be white. Actually, you were actually, both people who answered were right in the sense that perfect, I think the color is, is pretty close to perfect. It's, it's really close. Um, but I do think it needed to be tweaked a little bit in terms of its value. So we've done that and I'm, I'm, I'm liking this a lot more. So, I mean, you can see the difference here from there to there. It's, it's very noticeable. So we have um, Thao's, uh, Thao, uh, sorry, Thao, but, um, a comment from here saying that value seems fine, but it looks like it needs a touch of green. Touch of green. Okay, so that would be, in this case, uh, more yellow. So that's, that's probably, that's probably a tad lighter. But again, there is some variation in this. If you look at the, if you look at the painting, closely. There is a little bit of light and dark. So what I, what I think I'm going to do, since I've mixed this color up, is I'm just going to use what I've got here. And then, you know, if we have time at the end, being able to modify kind of an existing color, like we're close here, um, but maybe we do need to add a little bit more uh, green or yellow to make it more green. Um, and I could put a, like a really thin layer of, of yellow over top of this and see how that See how that works, but we'll uh, we'll just use what we've got here for the time being, and see how that plays out. I I have not switched. I've been pretty conscious of you, of my brushes because I think a big thing that that I see a lot of people do is they'll just get stuck on one brush, and you know you'll have a a, a painting that's you know, massive, and they'll be using a tiny brush like this, and it'll, you know, take them 15 minutes to go from here to there. Use whatever brush is necessary for the job. Um, this brush is actually doing what I want it to do. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's spreading really quickly. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stick with this one. And I'm just looking at this, and I see this color. I see this color way over here. Um, so I'm just going to take the last bits of this and throw that in this little triangle here. So you just look for a little, and you know, Picasso was no dummy. Um, he may have been a, a mean guy, but he was very smart. Um, and so this little echo is kind of a nice counterbalance. Like there's a lot of this going on over here. And he felt like maybe this over here could balance that out. Um, this value is the same as that, but it's kind of taken on the blueness of this, this dominant color here. So he's playing around with a lot of this, um, you know, sort of really subtle color stuff. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way kind of into the middle. There's a lot of greens in here. So what uh, I can't remember her name uh, was saying earlier about more greens. We need to go more green. I think there's definitely some greens in here. So I'm gonna you know, go ahead and mix up um, just with that cadmium because I think that cadmium uh, is, is the right yellow for the job. So I'm gonna take some of this green here and I'm just gonna try and fill in some of these, these little triangles and see how they match up. And a lot of this will have, have to do with what other colors are already around it. So, you know, when I put, you know, that purple over there and this white over here, these are going to change. They're going to be, you know, they're this, they're this green right now, but they are definitely going to look a little bit different when I add some of the other colors. So I'm just, I'm getting it kind of into the area of where we want to be, but I'm not trying to get it fully there yet because color is, uh, is very relative, meaning it relies on other colors to, to sort of reach its full potential, if, if that makes sense, instead of, you know, talking, talking to the paint like it's a child saying, oh, you got to reach your full potential. Well, it's, it's got to, you got to surround yourself with the right friends if you want to reach your, your, uh, your true potential. So, we're, we're trying to kind of get everything 
oriented. And then when we put this purple in and we put that white in, you know, hopefully everything will kind of fall into place. All right, so we got this green and we got this green. This looks a little darker. So I'll add, I'm gonna add a little medium to make the, increase the flow a little bit. So I'll add a little blue, add a good amount of yellow, just to make it a little bit darker. So that's a little bit too yellow. I'll throw in a little bit more of that. So a nice rich green, a little bit darker. So Mike, um, we do have a couple of people in the chat pointing out that um, with the light blue, you missed the inside of the frame on the top. Oh, I did. It, yeah. Good. <laughs> Excellent. I need you guys around when I'm actually painting my own pictures because um, that happens. <laughs> You just sort of miss, you miss something. Good one. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see, do we got any more green here? Da -da -da. Oh, there's one right here. Miss this one. There's another little green over here. This one's also a little darker, so I'll just throw in some of that. So you can kind of work on the fly here a little bit. Yeah, that's it. All right, so now I'll go back. Let's see if I can mix this blue from this color. So I need to go, I need to go more blue because that's that's too green. And then I need to, so this is a good exercise because I've only been using really these three colors in white. So I need to get the color back. Obviously, much, much too dark. So we'll tint it with that white. Oh, look at that. That's pretty good. It helps when you only have three three colors. And it's another thing people do that you know when they're I forgot the blue over there as well. Good thing I had some help. And you can see how quickly a painting like this really comes together and it really relies on everything being up and running. You know, it's and and it's and it's all about colors. It's all about relationships. It's all about transitions from one area to the next. All right, so we got that pretty good. Now let's see if I can't switch it back to this. So we got this far too dark. So I may uh, actually just go over here a little bit. And remember, we we kind of neutralized it with that brown. A little bit more blue. Slightly darker. Lo and behold, the trick. I think the trick to to making color easy to, easier to digest is keep your palette simple. Don't have you know six different blues and six different yellows and and try and negotiate all this stuff. It just it, it really can mix things up. The simpler you keep your palette, at least initially, um, the easier your life will be. As, as you get along and um, are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable, um, you can start, to, you know, you'll realize, oh, maybe a, maybe a cadmium blue is better off here, or a, a cadmium blue, a cadmium yellow instead of a Hansi yellow, or, you know, a brilliant yellow, or, or a lemon yellow, something like that. But initially, Find the colors that work best and closest and stick stick to it. Um, and only really kind of deviate from that when you know you feel like you've got the kind of the main structure, the main color relationships uh, established. All right, I'm gonna switch over. Let's see how much time we got. Oh, we got 15 minutes, plenty of time. Um, I've got this yellow out, so I'm gonna just block this big yellow uh, block in over here. Um, and this has actually got a little bit of kind of more of an earthy yellow. So for that, I'm going to go to my yellow ochre. Not a lot of it. It's mostly this cadmium. Ooh, this was this one's not even been open yet. I got to get the other one. I got too many too many tubes of paint. All right, we'll just put a little bit of this over there. Can everybody see that? Yeah, good. All right, good. So take some of this bright cadmium. There's a little remnant of green in there, but it's mostly dry. And 
it's not the end of the world if it, it kind of mixes in there because this yellow is not perfectly yellow. It's a little bit more subdued, but it is definitely yellow. I mean, there's no mistaking that color. That is a, what they would call an intense or saturated area of the painting. There's no debate that that is yellow. You know, there's some debate, yeah, that, that could be greenish, that could be bluish, that could be bluish green, um, but this is definitely yellow. So when we talk about intensity, that's kind of what we're talking about. When it's, when it's obviously uh, one color or another, and it's really, really uh, loaded with pigment. There we go. And I'm being really heavy with that. And that's really the only spot where that intense yellow is. But if you look around here, this is a much more muted um, yellow. So I'm gonna take some of this white and do a little kind of softer, more tinted yellow. So I'm just kind of interchanging between the two yellows. I think that's pretty good. And you can you can definitely see in the um, in the picture of the original. Good luck making a straight line. I'm doing marginally okay with it, but it's all right. There we go. Let's see, is there any more spots where this kind of, yeah, that's a little bit bright, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave it for now. I can always fix that later. It's definitely in the neighborhood. I'll do this now, but it's a little bit more white and it's actually a slightly grayish. And by gray, I mean, you know, it's not like black and white, but it is not, you know, yellow like we've got here. So I'm just gonna throw a little bit of that uh, raw umber in there just to kind of make it less yellow, just sort of kill the yellowness and then just use that for this. So it's, it's a slightly duller. See, that's still a little bit too yellow. It's still too close to that. So I'm just gonna go in here, mix some more of that, more white, Let's see how that goes. That's a little bit more muted. That's a little bit calmer. All right, now next we gotta, we gotta tackle the bull in the room, the elephant in the room, which happens to be a bull. And we gotta get that color. That seems a little bit better, especially compared to that. So you can see how these are really close to each other, but I've just decreased the warmth of that and made it a little bit more gray. And so there's a, there's a slight separation between those two. They're not, they're not mirror images of each other. While I've got this out, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this and make that slightly even more gray. So maybe take a little bit of this and maybe even throw in a little bit of this. Grays are, grays are pretty subtle in, in, the, in the sense that you're, you're, you're essentially mixing opposite ends of the color wheel, like red and green are opposite on the color wheels. If you mix that in the middle, you get sort of this grayish brownish color. Um, so if you're ever in doubt, it's like, oh, does that seem too intense? If it looks too blue, then take the opposite of that color. If it looks too red, take the opposite of that color as far as the color wheel goes. It's something I haven't really talked about a ton, um, but it is, it is a good lesson in terms of trying to digest uh, how color works. Because there's a lot of really kind of neutral grayish type colors here. It still looks a little too yellow. So the opposite of yellow is like purple. Maybe I need to get some, some red out. It's the only primary we have left. So we'll just take a little bit and we're gonna need it anyway. I'm addressing the 
bowl. Let's put a little bit of that in there. So I'm mixing up a little bit more of kind of a purple. And in, in the interest of getting away from that yellow. So this may take a little fine tuning, but when you're there, you'll see the difference. You can see how powerful that um, that yellow, uh, the cadmium yellow is. So there, that's that's better. That's more gray. I I can see it really well on my uh, palette. It's just kind of killed killed that yellowness a little bit. And then I'm going to put a little bit of medium in there to kind of make it let let some of this shine through here. Still got that kind of yellowish tint to it. And if in doubt, clean your brush. I think I've just got a lot of yellow that's kind of inundated in that, or even better, switch brushes, which I think I'll do. I'm gonna use this, this flat, it's sort of, it's called a filbert, it's kind of rounded, about the same size, but a slightly different shape. So I'm just trying to mix up this color without the yellow that I have. Oh yeah, that, oh, that looks really green. That's a little better. And then I'll just go a little brighter with it as well. So I think I got the color right now and I've got the lightness, that's better. So kind of knowing how color reacts and, and how color mixes, I'll just do all this. Yeah, that, that one I had before was just too yellow. So that, that's, that's a little better. Okay. Might even calm it down, calm that candle down a little bit more with this as well. All right, yeah, that seems better. All right, so let's go to the bowl. To the bowl. Uh, I got my brush. Clean that off. All right, so definitely warm end of the spectrum here. A lot of red, uh, definitely some yellow, sort of a nice orange color. And I'm just gonna start, I'm not gonna try and get all the subtleties right off the bat. I'm just gonna block this in as a big red shape. So I think that's sort of right in the middle. I'll be able to go darker. I'll be able to go redder. I'll be able to go yellow. Um, but this is definitely a, a decent place to start. I really mangled the shape of this, <laughs> this face. But like I said, I'm, I'm making a even more cubist view of this head. So this, this simple color palette here is some of this kind of brilliant red and then adding some of that cadmium yellow to it to give it more of an orange hue, orange color. And I'm, I'm working fairly thinly so that like when I cover something up, I can still see where that eyebrow is. And actually I'm just gonna go over the eye too because I can see there's a lot of that orange in there. And not really worrying about being uniform with this color, especially because there's, there's lots of little facets of orange and yellowish orange and, and variations thereof. I'm just trying to block it in and then I'll, then I'll come in and do a little adjustment. Oh, we're down to the wire, down to the wire. 
let's see here. So I'll get some red and I'll, I'll make sort of a dark red. So I'll take a little bit of this red and this brown, not that much. So something like that. And so we can kind of come in over to the side of the face like that, down to the nostrils, a little shadow hinted at there. Not really, you know, making it round or anything, but just giving it a little bit of uh, modulation. So you got to just sort of take now this little corner of colors Pull it over a little bit more so you can see better. Uh, let's see here now. So just making kind of darker colors, just going into the kind of the, the cheekbone, I guess you could say. Like that. And a little nostril or the hint of a nostril. Let's see, there's that. Okay, and now let's do some yellows. So just taking straight yellow and letting it kind of mix with what's on here already. Uh, ooh, that's a bit much. I'll go over there where it's a bit more. So now I'll just mix this with some of that orange. Modify this a little bit more. That's a little better. But that uh, that cadmium yellow, I'm I'm very uh, very confident with that color as, as having been one of uh, Picasso's original original choices because it seems to be doing doing the trick pretty well. All right, uh, let me get a smaller brush here really quick. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna get some black. Um, I haven't done a lot of super details in here, but the last bit, um, there's a lot of black throughout this kind of tying things together. So I'm just gonna come in, first of all, with some pure black. So I'll just take a little bit of medium. Can you see that? There we go. It's just straight black. So, doop, doop. Uh, do the whole little, forgot that purple. Oh, hell. I'll do that later. Now I'm going to take some brown and black and mix up this palette. Probably needs a little bit more brown, but pretty close. Lots of really nice subtle color in this one. And then we've got some, I think more of a blue black through here like this, this. You can get a lot of mileage out of this dark black. So the, these kind of marks are really kind of defining a lot of the, the more subtle shapes that we've established. Uh, Picasso was really influenced by like um, masks, like especially like African masks. That was a big influence of a lot of early modernist painters in Europe. Um, you know, just sort of big stylized 
shapes. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna make my own version here. Put some dark dark marks for the nostrils. Let's see, chin there. This bull has a weak chin. I apologize to the bull. I didn't draw it all that great, but I think we definitely got the idea of what's going on here. This is a big dark shape right there. This looks more kind of gray right here, kind of a grayish blue. So I'll take that, a little white in there. There we go. Just missed a few colors. I'll just do one final flourish here. See how lucky I get. I'm gonna take, I had a little bit of that black left on there but we've, we've got that purple that we haven't really dealt with yet. I don't think I'm gonna do a great job with this, but I think it'll be in the neighborhood and that's really all I want at this stage. So yeah, there we go. That's purple enough, probably needs a little more white. There we go. Who says you can't paint effectively in, in a panic? It can be done. And now we can draw in our candelabra. Bing. Look, missed a few colors in here, but we got a lot of good color mixing done in there. So there we go. That was that was some uh, quick recovery time there at the end. Um, maybe we should do a little quick show and tell. What do we think? We got some time maybe for that. We're a little over Are some volunteers that would maybe like to show how they they went with this one. This is kind of a rough and tumble trip through uh, a Picasso abstraction. Let's see how we did. So here's Sarah. Oh yes, Sarah, very nice. Ooh, yeah, yeah. You got some that that red yellow in the face. Very nicely done. Went a little more pastel and almost Matisse colors here. I like it. Matisse and Picasso were sort of contemporaries of each other and were kind of always in competition. Yeah, very nice, Sarah, as usual. Great job. And we have Ed's iPad, but I believe that's not Ed. Nope, that's Diane. I know Diane now. Excellent. Sorry if I violated some disclosure laws there, but hello, Diane. Oh yeah, that looks great. Oh, you got the purple much better than I did. Very nice. Really good. And we oh, and have, you got and you got all those parts that I missed as well. Great job. Then we have Allie. Allie. Oh, all right. Good. Oh, you spent you spent more time on the drawing the face. Much better job than I did. My face is falling apart. Yours is much more solid. That bull, that bull has been done justice. Very nicely done. Then we have Susan. All right, Susan. Yeah. Good, wow. another good bull drawing. You guys are putting me to shame with these bull drawings. Madeline. Yeah, Madeline, oh, nice. Yeah, you really got the cubist elements there with all those kind of geometric faceted portions. That looks really good. Madeline, yeah. Madeline, Madeline. Cat Kylie. Um, Kylie, oh yeah, nice. You went a little bit more vibrant with your greens. I like that too. See how it's a nice contrast with those, the red and the greens are kind of opposite of each other. And if you just tweak your colors a little bit, it really can dramatically alter the way those colors relate. Those colors relate. 
Yeah, very nice. I have Cindy. Cindy, very nice. Oh, yeah, you worked a little, a little bit bigger too. This looks maybe like 16 by 20 or something like that. Great. Really yeah. nice, bold shapes. Really captured the modernist element of it. Yeah. And then we have, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, Saraba. Oh, one second. Uh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, you got that separation of those two big colors in the background. That looks really good. This yeah. set more bluish and more greenish off to the left. Great. Nicely done. We have Lynn as well. Mm. All right. Nice, Lynn. Oh. oh, you did it. Did you do it reversed? No. Or is that just me looking at it? It might be so, mirrored. It might be mirrored. Yeah. All right. And I think shows that... you my brain. Very nice. I like that. You sort of took it to the purple end of things. That blue that looked really good. And All right. Anyone, is that everybody? I, um, I think so. If we missed anyone, please remember you can also post it on social media and hashtag make it with Michael's and Michael's classes so we can get to um, look at all of them. Yeah. Great job, folks. Thank you. This has been February's uh, abstraction month. Month has now come to a, a close. Um, next month, we're going to start some uh, paintings relating to hopefully spring, maybe uh, starting in your area. And so we'll have sort of garden themed floral floral type paintings. Um, and we're going to take a look at a lot of sort of French Impressionist era painters. Um, Pissarro, Camille Pissarro is one. And then I think we do a Fontaine Latour. Uh, and there's, I forget the other two, but there's, um, it's a good month. And we don't start, I believe, if, and I correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's a class next week because we only have four in March. Um, so the first week um, is a little bit of an adjournment and we'll start up again on the, I believe it's the 8th or the 9th. Um, but check the schedule. Um, I believe that's correct though. All right. Thank you, everybody. I really enjoyed it and hope to see you again next time. Take care. See you later.